another waking up paper if you are all sleeping i assure you you will all wake up with dr janardan ghosh's paper vaishnava natya leela sri chaitanya trist with performance inducing spirituality om sthapakaya ch dharmasya sarva dharma sarupane अवतार वरिष्ठाय राम कृष्णाय ते नम उपस्थित सकल के सदर अभिनंदन एवं भलोबासा प्रीति और शुभे आज के इंडिकार जे विदग्ध पंडित समावेश समावेश अंश ग्रहण करते पे धन्य विशेषकर वैष्णव साहित्य वैष्णव तत्व एवं वैष्णव संस्कृत जो आलोचनार एक परिमंडल एखे सृष्टि स्नान निजे पवित्र हार एक चेष्टा चला विशेषकर धन्यवाद डर पतुरी जी के एवं श्रीनिवास जी के जार सहयोगता भिन्न ये क्षेत्र सम्भव हतो ना वेल सर हेड अलरेडी कैंड अफ रेज दर फर मी उच इज रियलि डिफिकल्ट to confront uh and i feel at the fag end of the uh any kind of conference when you have prevailed through so much of intellectual rigor uh it gives you an impetus or a kind of a good feeling that it's going to end soon so that is that is the good feeling that i think uh, i might be able to provide you with that the end is closer well i'm going to talk about vaishnava natya leela sri chaitanya trist with performance inducing spirituality now this is a very narrowed topic in the kind of uh, vastness that you have already dwelt in i am going to look through a very narrow lens the performativity of chaitanya who is a founder of a religious movement of a particular re- uh, region and that is bengal which later on spread across the world so my entire looking would be very focused very narrow and also i would be my my theoretical premise that i have here is performance studies rasa theory and a little bit of historical tracing of how chaitanya is posited by the established bengali theater historians how do we place chaitanya and what is missing what is incomplete in evaluating chaitanya as a performer and why performance became an integral part of gaudiya vaishnava movement that is also very interesting because if you usually see the a uh, popular image of chaitanya he is in a performative mode with his raised hand most of these uh, images are like that so performance might have been a very integral part of his religious practice so we are going to look into these areas uh the first part uh, i would just give you a uh, uh, a kind of a uh, tracing of how i'm going to follow this particular paper a mapping of this particular paper first i'm going to talk about a little bit of the historical facts how what is the history that has been talked about by the bengali historians about bengali theater where is chaitanya posited and then we look into how chaitanya's theater could have been a potential theatrical practice which does not have a proper legacy now also which was never followed and never explored that way and later on in the third aspect i would also look into how it was mutually beneficial for the vaishnava religious practice the philosophical idea was it kind of replenished the ideas of what philosophy chaitanya had so these are the three aspects three categories that we will fast travel through so if we look into the origin of bengali theater now it is said that there are very minute mentions in chorjapod of buddhist chorjapod 
in Natya Shastra it has been mentioned, in Abhinaya Darpana also slight mentions are there. Then in Nataka Lakshana by uh, Sagar Nandi and Lochan Pandit's Raga Tarangini, we have slight mentions of Bengal theatre, the theatre that emerged in Bengal. In Natya Shastra, what we find basically about the way there are different origin theories of Natya, uh, about Nataka in Natya Shastra. So one of them definitely is the popular one, which is the Vedic origin. I'm not going into that where Brahma is telling Bharata to kind of compile the different formulations of Nataka. But I would also talk about the folk origin that is there which is predominantly more closer to what the other historians feel might be the origin of Bengali theatre. One aspect which is mentioned in Natya Shastra is Pravritti. Now, what is Pravritti? He identified four different quarters according to the psychophysical tendencies and the ways and the ways of life of people inhabiting those quarters. These phenomena is termed as Pravritti. So, there were four Pravrittis, Dakshinatya, Avanti, Panchala Madhyama and Odra Magadhi. And this Odra Magadhi is the eastern regional. But later on, we find that in the, the uh, explanations and the treatise written by Abhinava Gupta and by Dhananjaya, there is a contention whether these Pravrittis were independently practiced in a particular region or there was some fluidity, like there was a mixture. So if there was a fluidity, then identifying a particular kind of a practice from a region is very difficult. So that difficulty was there with Natishas. But what is the most popular and I find most attractive origin of theatre in Bengal is the folk origin. And in this folk origin, we find uh, Professor Monomotho Mohan Basu, uh, who is not referred by usual, uh, you know, theatre historians. He feels that Bengali theatre emerged out of different folk ritual practices. And one of these ritual practice was worshipping Surya, because Surya was the source of energy, Surya was the source of food and so, so many. And Surya was a very tangible kind of superpower that was there in front of the people then who would try to worship. So, Surya worship was a very uh, dominant uh, practice in the ancient time, but Surya was replaced by Shiva. And that is how this folk practice entered into the uh, classical theatrical practice also. I've got a very interesting uh, text which talks about how Surya and Shiva they almost like changed their positions and how Surya gave place to uh, Shiva. This is a small text. It's in Bangla also. I've translated in English. This is, this is a conversation between Suryai and Gauri. Now, Gauri, as we know, is Shiva's wife, according to the Bengali pantheon and definitely popular uh, Shaivite traditional folk tales. Also, we know Gauri is Shiva's wife. But here we find Suryai having his wife as Gauri. So Gauri is asking, Tomar deshi jamure Suryai ami kapore dukho pamu. I shall go to your country Suryai, but I shall suffer for clothes. But then Suryai says, Nogore nogore ami tatiya boshamu. In the cities I shall have weavers settled. Don't worry. Please come. When she is at her mother's place and she is uh, reluctant to go back to Surya's place. So she is. Then she has another uh, condition. Tumar desi jamure Suryai ami shankher dukho pab. So I will have problems because I don't think I will suffer because of lack of conch shells. So he says, no, don't worry. In the cities, I shall have conch shell traders settled. Nagore nagore ami shakhari basham. Then Gauri comes to a very, very, she feels that this is the reason that Surya won't be able to kind of give a proper answer to that. He said, Tomar deshe jamune Suryai ami ma boli bo kare. So I'll go to your country, but whom do I call mother? Then Surya says, Amar je ma ache, ma boli ba tare. So 
I have a mother. You call her the same. So all these kind of this is a very interesting conversation. A palagan. It's a form of a singing pattern which is there, where we find Surya and Shiva being the same. So from Shiva itself, uh, I think uh, this folk form of theater also emerged, and which later on we have urban theater. Why Shivotsav is uh, uh, there are other kind of uh, possible reasons why we can think that Shivotsav was one of the reason for theatre emerging in Bengal is one of the uh, uh, festivals which still kind of ritual festivals which still exist in Bengal is Gambhira, Chorok. You have heard of this Chorok and Gambhira. If you see this is an image of Chorok, Chorok Utsav. This is Shiva Utsav. And Gajon Utsav. These are popular folk Utsavs that happen in Bengal. And what is you see here is a bamboo post, which is similar to Jarjara in our performance. Now, Jarjara is also um, seen in Western performances, also in Shakespearean plays in England. There was maypole, a maypole was planted. So all this must have gone from our eastern. That is what Monomotha Nagbasu feels. That these traditional performative uh, elements must have traveled to the west. And they have these elements which they have picked up. But we always look that everything comes from the west to the east. And that is what the uh, some of the contemporary theater historians are talking about. That Bengali theater originates somewhere around 18th century. After there was this Russian director called Gerasim Lebedev, who in 1795 did a play in Bangla. So they considered that to be the first Bengali play and beginning of Bengali theatre. And they also, also, uh, they speak about the Sanskrit influence also in Bengali theatre a little because in Bangla we call theatre as Natok. So in Dasarupaka, we have Nataka. So it must have emerged from Nataka. So that kind of an assumption is also made. But Monomotunath Basu feels that there was this indigenous form of Bengali theater that grew in Bengal. And that is which has been less explored. So it is more of these influences we talk more about and contemporary practice also is more on the Western lines than on these indigenous practices. So, uh, another thing that we find in classical theater also, this Samudra Manthan and Tripardaha as the two major texts, which were there a part of classical theater, which is also based on Shiva's tale. So, it, these Shiva references are always there. Then, like Dr. Kait said, that along after this Shiva influence, there was this Krishna cult, which influenced Bengali theater. And we have... Uh, uh, there is one little mention that I would, uh, oh, I would just, so I would go very fast then uh, because uh, there are so many things that I had thought that I would be sharing. But no, 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 because there is a paucity of time. I would rather kind of uh, brush, uh, rush through all this. Uh, one thing was the Bengali, the Sanskrit influence on Bengali theatre is also contested because of another reason. And that is because of Satapata Brahmana, where it is said that the river Sadanira or Kotra, uh, this Karatova, which is there in Bengal, that was the reason till which the Vedic influences were there. Beyond the Karatova river, the influences did not spread. So they had their original indigenous forms, which was practiced by Chaitanya. I'll straightway go into Chaitanya's practice. Now, there are three books that uh, I am going to kind of, I have quoted in the text. They are Chaitanya Bhagavat written by uh, Vrindavan Das. Then we have Chaitanya Charam Charitamrita that is by uh, Kobi Raj uh, um, Goswami. And we have Chaitanya Mangal by Jagannatha and Lochana. Now Chaitanya Mangala was also the name of Chaitanya Bhagavat. Chaitanya Mangala had a lot of entertaining elements and less of spiritual uh, references. So the uh, Goswamis of uh, 
Vrindavan, they felt that the Chaitanya Mangala of Vrindavan Das should be changed, a different name should be given to it and they named it as Chaitanya Bhagavat. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, there is this chapter, 18th chapter, which is uh, in, the, in the second volume. There are three volumes, Adi Khanda, Madhyama Khanda and the final Khanda. In the second volume, 18th chapter has an elaborate discussion of how Chaitanya is performing plays. What kind of things that he is... There is one scholar called Dr. S.K. Day who feels that Vaishnavas were not able to influence Bengali theatre because they were predominantly into a very, very melodramatic, emotional experience which did not kind of enrich the Jatra or the Bengali theatre, which was more subtle and more sophisticated, they felt. But this has been argued that Chaitanya's theatre is far more sophisticated then what SK they had thought? We will go into that sophistication a little. Uh, I He had an early experience of theatre doing which is there. He had Vamana roles and other roles are there which I am not going to talk about. After his initiation, he had all these performances. He had done about three performances. One was Rukmini Haran. Second was uh, Dana Leela. And third was... Uh, this, uh, uh -huh. yeah, okay. So I, 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 unable to remember the third one. It's there in the paper. He had another performances here. He, uh, he oh, Ravanavar, Ravanavar. So these performances here. Most of these performances, uh, performance, uh, these performances happened after his initiation to Vaishnavism. He went to Gaya and then he got initiated by Madhva Sampradaya. Now this Madhva Sampradaya getting in, in, uh, uh, initiated by Ishwar Puri. Now there was this contention that Puris had Sankarite connection. And Madhva Sampradaya, he gets into uh, uh, the, the, the Sampradaya of Madhva. That becomes a debatable issue which... Uh, I have just read that portion because we know what is the differences between Shankar, Shankaracharya's views about reality, how he has epitomized the truth as a non-difference Advaita and how do we see Madhva, the duality is the only reality as he is talking about. But what Chaitanya does, he says that both Madhva and both Shankara, they are partially right and partially wrong and that is why he comes up with this Achinta Bheda Bheda. Now, this Achitta Bheda Bhed, this concept of the inconceivable difference in non-difference of reality is applicable not only in the met metaphysics, but also in the ontology of, you know, the daily uh, concept of living. All dimensions of human existence is also applied in Achitta uh, In all dimensions of human experience, we can apply Achitta Bheda Bhed. So there, because there is a continuous flux between many realities and many realms, the role taking, the taking of roles, playing of roles became an important aspect of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And that is why this role taking became an important philosophical veracity for Achinta Bheda Bheda, which might have given impetus to practice so much of theatre by Chaitanya. So, from there, we also see the Catholicism which has been already spoken about Vaishnava practice in Chaitanya. Also, we find this Catholic attitude. Like how he has been, while he is listening to Shiva, Pro, Shiva's songs, he himself considers himself to be Shiva. And while he is, uh, 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 he, 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 he is also, there are portions when he is doing a Nagar Kirtan and passes through a temple, Mother's temple, Shakti temple, he worships there too. So these kind of practices are also there, which I am not going in details because it moves away from the uh, from my topic. As a performer, he was not only the producer of his company, he was also the director. He would kind of involve all his members, he would uh, give them characters, he would tell whom to do what. The aspect of his performance was more of improvisation. He would, how he would structure his performance, he would take a theme, 
any theme, Rukmini Bad. So he will take that theme. With that theme, he will cast the crew. He will give them roles to play. He will practice the songs, which would be intermittent kind of connectors with the entire storyline. The rest of the performance would be improvised. The dialogues would be improvised. He won't go for a structured dialogue. And in this practice, he would go for a practice which is very interesting. He would, whenever he would take up a role, he would say, Mui say, Mui say. Mui say means, I am that. Aham Brahmasmi. Now, this is something that is very interesting. Whether he would do it as a kind of uh, religio performative goal or was it something that he did only for the performance and then he would kind of elevate to the religious experience. But this experience of Aham Brahmasmi, which has been in contemporary times, if you look at Stanislavski's way of magic, if, if I am that, and I am that, that is what the practice that, but that is at a very uh, superficial level, uh, but that was so kind of uh, engraved into the practice of Chaitanya that he would become that. While doing Rukmini, he would become Rukmini. While doing Lakshmi, he would become Lakshmi. While doing the role of uh, Radha, he would become Radha. So all these manifestation of the cosmic power by being the character was something which was very important about his performance. And finally, we I had a series of uh, uh, series of uh, I, I had a series of uh, points which would describe his performance as a very contemporary performance known as performance art. If you have heard of performance art, it's a very contemporary postmodern performance. We have people like Laurie Anderson, we have people like Capro, we have people like Yoko Ono in the West who are talking about. But I have found out that each and every step taken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been so very close to this performance art form. It was living, it was politically motivated. When the Kazi was against the Vaishnavas of uh, uh, Nabudip and he had broken the Mridanga, he had this processional performance from his place to Kazi's place and the entire performance was designed who would be in the front, who would be there at the back. There was installations at every house, which is performance art. If you look at performance art, it's uh, talking about that. So, I have categorically said that every element of performance art was there in Chaitanya's art. It is unfortunate that we have not followed and uh, we have not gone into uh, e exploring Chaitanya further. The last thing which was very important but which I won't go deep into. I'll just read out one paragraph. I'll just read out one paragraph. It's the concluding paragraph. I was talking about how he could have influenced performance, but how performance became also an important part of the Vaishnava philosophy, how they were mutually kind of uh, helping each other, supporting each other, making it productive. That is also a very important question. Wherein I find that Rasa theory playing a very important role in formulating Bhakti Rasa. And especially if you look at Raganuga Bhakti Sadhana, this is based on Natya Shastra's Rasa theory. And, it, uh, and it has been proposed by Rupa Goswami in his phenomenal book in Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu and later other books also. They talk about how Rasa was formulated in bhakti form, how bhakti became a ras. So I'm just reading that last paragraph as I promised, sir. Rupa states that the emotion called love, rati, is the play of the great power Mahashakti, which is the Ladini Shakti, the power of infinite bliss, and participates in the inconceivable essential nature of God, Achinta Swarupa. The aim of a Gaudiya Vaishnava is to participate, produce bhakti in the aspect of God defined as love or infinite bliss. Since emotion plays an important role in the participation in the aspects of Krishna's life, Rupa finds rasa to be useful in explaining the process of bhakti. It has further been explained that how he uh, formulates the entire bhakti uh, thing. 
The other thing is that when in practice there were two different schools, one was by Rupa Kaviraj and other was by Vishwanatha. Vishwanatha thought that bhakti should be practiced mentally, but Rupa Kaviraj thought that it should be practiced physically by physically imitating the Siddha, uh, Siddha Rupa. Like in the Sadhaka Rupa, you should copy and imitate and act out the roles of the Siddha Rupa. The Siddha Rupas were the characters from Gokul. They were people like Sudama, they were people like Yashoda, they were people like Radha, the Manjuris, the Gopis. But this physical acting which became a part of Sadhana was another aspect which came from Chaitanya school. I think with that brief note, <laughs> I happen to kind of conclude my... Thank you very much.